Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to everybody today. We are talking about how to create e-courses and make money while you are asleep. So uh, today we're going to explore the whole notion of how there is a cap for most practitioners on how many people you can see, right? Whoever um, joins the call, make sure you say hello. And I'm open to all the discussions and all the questions today around e-courses, platforms, um, and other passive income streams. So what I realized when I was working as a full-time practitioner was I was um, capping out at the amount of people I could actually see. And um, there's only so many hours in the day. And of those, we've got to fit so much more in, right? So of the 168 hours that we have in a week, we have to create opportunities to be able to um, connect with uh, our family. We've got to create opportunities to connect with clients. And we've got to create opportunities to connect in um, the ways that we do with our bigger goals as well. And... Um, the interesting thing that I found was I was getting burnt out seeing so many clients. And when I was seeing so many clients, it, it didn't leave a lot of room for creating my bigger goals. Um, is anybody here having the same problem? Because quite a few people do. First, we want to fill our books. We just want more and more people to come and see us. And then we realize, oh, well, we've got this other time to do stuff with. Um, and then we want cash flow to come in. And then when we're completely booked, we want to leverage our time. You might be in any of these cases and in any of them, you can still have the opportunity to make money while you're asleep, particularly if you've got some time to create a course. Now, course creation does take time, but it only takes one time. Whereas if you see clients, you've got to see them and whereas a course you create in one hit and then you're able to, it's able to automatically go out. So um, if you are trying to fill up your books and you aren't having a lot of success in there, but you, you are the person with the freshest amount of knowledge in your head, then maybe taking parts of that knowledge and taking the time to put it into a program or an e-course, then sharing that knowledge is going to be able to uh, make you money literally while you're asleep. So I wake up um, most mornings with a... Um, notification from either PayPal or Stripe or any of my other platforms telling me that I made a certain amount of money while I was asleep. Now, this money comes from programs. It comes from affiliate payments that I have with other um, companies. It also comes from my um, e-courses and it also comes from my membership programs. And so I don't actually have to be there for most of that because it's automatically going out. And this is the interesting thing with being a practitioner how can we leverage our time so that we can see all the people that we're really here to see, not like everybody, but the people we're truly here to help and make money while we're asleep. So e-courses is one of those. So today I wanted to talk to you about e-courses. Uh, e-courses makes it uh, kind of super simple for us because we have the opportunity to share things um, because once you start sharing, what you'll notice is you have so much information in there. It is amazing what is in there. And um, once you have, like, it's like kind of opening floodgates. Once you start, once, if I was to ask any of you guys about your favorite subject at the moment, some of you might be into skin, some of you might be into PCOS, some of you might be into a new modality you have, you're not going to tell me a little bit. You're going to want to talk about so much of it, an in-depth kind of conversation that is ongoing. And that's exactly what an e-course is. It is chunked down in-depth conversations about a particular journey or a particular subject that you want to talk about. Uh, so if you were going to write an e-course, anyone who's listening, if you were going to write an e-course, what would your e-course be on? Um, what are some of the ideas that you've had thinking, okay, I'm going to uh, pop out an e-course. I think I could do one of those at some stage. What would be your one? So we've got, um, hey, Linda, hey, Kirsten, hey, Louise, hey, Grace, hey, Alison. Uh, so what are some of the subjects that you would love to do an e-course on that you've thought about that you're like, oh, maybe this and then maybe this and then maybe this and then maybe this. 
Louise, yes, you've already got one and it's on thyroid health. Fantastic. Um, and many of you guys will have different types of subjects that you currently talk about. Okay, Kristen says uh, gut health and anxiety. Nice. Uh, Lisa says growing your own food and medicine. Beautiful. Uh, Julie says blood sugar and weight and hormones. Fantastic. Uh, Kirsten, reading food labels. That would be an epic little mini course. Wouldn't that be cool? You could sell that for like 20 bucks and people will just pop on and uh, they watch a little video. They download whatever you actually give them. And all of a sudden you are making that, you only have to do that actual presentation once. You only have to make that PDF once and then you pop it on something to automate it. So um, super cool. Um, oh, Alison, nice idea. Basic bookkeeping for healthcare workers. Mm, I like it. Um, I'm all for the um, practitioner ecosystem of, um, of money going around. I love it. All right. So what you'll notice is you are going to be full of lots of ideas. And um, you might have multiple ideas. Now, if you're in this place and you have multiple ideas, it is the one that either you have been asked about. So if somebody asks you about it, it's very likely that they'll pay for it. They'll pay for that information. It's very likely they're already looking for that information on Google. And it's very likely that they've asked you because they think you know about that particular subject. So to be able to get an e-course to sell, you don't just make the thing that you're excited about because that might not actually sell and you might spend a lot of time, energy and money building an e-course that isn't going to sell any in the end. And trust me, I've done that. I spent $8,000 on creating my first e-course and I sold like three or six of them. And uh, so I actually spent $7,000 on a very beautiful big mistake never to have to do that again. So um, the beautiful thing, and I created my, my book from that as well, but the cool thing about creating an e-course that somebody has asked you about is it means it's actually needed. Somebody is asking you about it because they think you know about it. Now, you might be a practitioner that, you know, gets a whole bunch of people currently coming in for colds, flus, and that kind of thing, or family kind of um, health conditions, right? But what you really love to do is female hormones. And people don't actually ask you about that. Now, it wouldn't be the best commercially viable idea because currently you have, for want of a better term, a celebrity status as the family person. But what you were excited about is the female hormone stuff. So to start off with, whatever you have a celebrity status in, something that somebody is already asking you about or something you already know about, that somebody there's this conversation already going on, that's what you need to do that particular one, not one that you randomly pick an idea for. So when it comes to your um, e-course ideas, try the one that people are asking you about, not the one that you're super excited about first. Second, if that's not working, go and do the one that you're super excited about. It's very likely that where your attention goes, energy flows. But first, try to go for the commercially viable one because if you can get some money in and some people in and some feedback, then you get a better opportunity to create something new in the long run. All right. That's picking a subject. Next. Um, next is if you already have your subject. So we've got Kirsten saying gut health. We've got Julie saying blood sugar. And you've picked your one subject. Don't try making three courses all at once. Emily knows all about that. <laughs> we want to create one at a time. And what we want to do is follow it all the way through in a whole cycle back to the start. So what that means is we want to create the course. We want to get it out and we want to share it with people to see if they're going to buy it. You don't have to create the whole of a course. Um, it's actually really unlikely that a lot of people who are pushing out their courses are, cre are creating the whole thing at the beginning because some of the best marketers in the world and um, people like Lisa Messenger from the, the Renegade Collective or the Collective Magazine that um, just finished up, every time that they put out a product, they would put out the sales for the product, the sales and marketing information for the product to see if anyone would buy it. So it's a register of interest. And as soon as people are interested in it, then you've got people who are actually going to buy it. 
which is very different to me creating an entire course worth of $8,000 worth of content that only three people bought. So first you want to get your idea and then you want to share it in a way that is benefit driven to people, not fact driven. I'm going to do a blood sugar course and in this course you will learn about your blood sugars, you will learn about how your kidneys look after it, you will learn about how your adrenal glands and corticosteroids look after it, you will look after you will look at how your pancreas looks after it, you will look at testing your blood it's not really the thing that everyone's going to go for in the layperson's terms, is it? So instead, another option is to go with the benefits. At the end of this course, you'll be empowered to. You will have um, knowledge around. You will be able to take this course at your own pace. You will be able to uh, share this information with um, your loved ones. You will be able to... Um, it will be able to be done in your own time. There's all these benefit-driven things. So one's a fact and then there's benefit. And when you're creating a course and you want to be able to share it with people, the first thing you do is create a sales page. And that sales page has to be benefit-driven, has to be how what they're going to benefit from. What are they going to feel when they've done it? What are they going to experience at the end of it? Not the information that they're going to be given not the modality that you are using, what they're going to get from that particular modality, what they're going to get from the information, the feelings that they're going to feel, the, um, the changes that are going to be made. So once you've got all of those things on a sales page, now a sales page can be as simple as using MailChimp for a lead page. And a lead page is a page that has a lead box. A lead box is where somebody puts in their email address. So if someone's going to be interested in what you have to present, then they're going to put their email address. So in the beginning, you create either a sales page on your website or a lead page through something like MailChimp. And you can share that around and you do have to share it around. You can't just create a course and or create an idea for a course and not share it because you're probably not going to get anybody in there if nobody knows about your course. So once you've created it, you can then share it and find out if people are interested in it. If more than one person puts their email address in there, it's time to make the course, right? So first we want to create something, let the world know what it's going to be about through a benefit-driven sales page or lead page. And then we're going to create the course. What um, ways in which you can create the course are all sorts of formats, but one of my favorites is the post-it note method. Essentially, you just grab a whole bunch of post-it notes and you quickly write down all of your ideas about what you could put in your course. And you plonk them all out either on your desk or on your floor or on a, on a mirror or on a wall. And then you can filter them around into a system, into a journey that you want to take your client on. Now, if you've done any research or background in um, adult learning, you'll know that there's a, a logical sequence for different types of learning styles. Some, some learning styles are auditory. People want to hear it. Some are visual. They want to see it or be described to them in visual terms. And others are kinesthetic, and it goes in that way. So um, the thing about that is you want to put all the auditory, the stuff that people have got to listen to, kind of at the start. You want to put all the visual stuff. You're going to make sure you want to talk to them through maybe making a PowerPoint presentation. Maybe you want to create a, a downloadable, something kind of readable. And then you want to have um, the kinesthetic people towards the end, a call to action, people to take action and do something. And you'll see it, that's what I do in, the, in these lives and this is what I do in a, a whole bunch of my, um, my work is I take a whole bunch of learning and development style tools, facilitation tools and behavioral change tools and make them into a logical sequence that can be then worked through as a journey. Same thing happens with you guys if you're going to teach people about their health and their well-being. You're going to... Grab all the little notes and you're going to go, okay, well, people are going to start from the simple stuff to go to the complex stuff. They're going to, what can I give them the best um, piece of information at the beginning that's going to make the most amazing change for them at the beginning that they're then going to want to listen for the next couple of weeks? 
And how is it not only in alignment with them, but in alignment with me? Now, if you're a visual um, type of person, then you might want to actually create a, a PowerPoint presentation. And that might be what you want to talk to. Um, some of the really cool tools that we can use online is things like useloom.com. Useloom.com. It's a great tool because you can just record anything that you currently got on your computer screen and you can create your presentation it can record your voice you can also do this with the most uh, recent version of powerpoint but some of us don't have that so use loom is there it's a free tool to be able to use that and record and essentially have that video component to your course if you're an auditory person you don't have to make a, a video version of it you can actually make an audio version of it now audible uh, no, not Audible, Audacity. Audacity is the app that you can use to create um, audio files. And once you've got an audio file, you might actually have your particular clients listening to you instead because either they prefer to, ha um, to listen and they are busy mums or they are corporates or they are whoever, they're probably already listening to podcasts and things like that. That's if they're your target market. They probably prefer it that way and you might prefer it that way and you might show up in a different way if you just have to talk to it and you don't have to worry about what things look like on a camera. And then the third thing is that kinesthetic side of things. If, you, if it's in alignment with you, you want to create a downloadable. You want to create an actionable step. Now, I've seen some amazing ones, things like um, colorings. I've seen um, coloring in pictures. I've seen checklists. I've seen quizzes. I've seen self-assessment self questionnaires. And you can get all of these, a lot of these from our suppliers as well. Um, I've also seen... Uh, what else have we got? Um, quizzes. I've also seen, um, hmm, what else? Workbooks, worksheets, play sheets. Uh, there, there is, um, and then there is instructions and things like that. So something downloadable and tangible that they can take away for that particular week or that particular lesson. So with your post-it notes, Rachel's saying, off to get more post-it notes. With your post-it notes, you could have uh, where are we? We're back to front. Um, you could have up the top, I'm going to do a video on, so we started with, what do we start with? Blood sugar. I'm going to have a video on symptoms of blood sugar. And then underneath that, I'm going to have a PDF downloadable of where all the hidden sugars are in my foods that are currently making me feel like this and to go and check them off. And then the next week it might be, I'm now going to be able to share um, where it's actually coming from and what tests you can tell. And then we're going to have a next little section of a, a PDF that's specifically around um, how to find your pancreas, how to find your, um, how to test your own blood sugar at home. So a little instruction manual that comes with it. Week three, we might go diving into how um, blood sugars change your mood and having a mood questionnaire and how that might be affecting your neurotransmitters and how it might be affecting a whole bunch of other stuff. So we, we're taking people on a journey from the simple to the more complex and we're taking them um, through either visual, auditory or kinesthetic all the way through and then at the end of it, we're then able to package that up and we have to put it somewhere. Now, I've told you a couple of little um, tips and tricks about places to put it, but... Um, some other places that you can put it on the internet. Very, very cheap and easy ways of doing it. Number one is Teachable. Teachable is um, an online tool. If you've got enough time to learn something a little bit different, hopping on Teachable is really good because you can put all of your content on there and you don't need your own website to do it. You can put all of your content on there, so all of the video and the bits and pieces and, the, and the, through the journey, and then they, you can actually take money through there as well. Uh, either through your PayPal account or Stripe account, um, and it sits on somebody else's platform. All you have to do is share it to let everybody know that your beautiful piece of work is there. And sometimes that's the hardest thing. We'll do another video on that another day, the sharing bit. But Teachable, Thinkrific, another third-party platform. Kajabi, more expensive but beautiful third-party platform. And then there are other platforms that you can put in with your 
um, particular uh, your particular website software. So plugins. If you're running a WordPress website, Zippy Courses or Access Ally are my favorites when it comes to running an e-course on your website. Um, uh, there is ways in uh, Squarespace to run an e-course in your website now. Some They've got new ways of doing that in Squarespace and they're quite beautiful. Um, the most simple way in Squarespace is to actually create all of the content as a password protected area on your website through Squarespace. And you can get a password protected one and then you have to share that with the members of your um, your e-course, that, that particular password. But it's it's one password for the whole group, whereas some of the other ones that I've discussed are, are, are individual. All right, so th then you've got your platforms, right? So once you've got your content, you can put it on your platform. And then once it's on the platform, you are then able to, one, share it, and two, take money. Taking money depends on you having either a PayPal uh, business account or a Stripe account or some other method of payment. Um, some people use things like um, a plugin for WooCommerce or memberships when it comes to um, your WordPress website to be able to take money. And then once you've got those mechanisms, you can put on the little notifications so that when you wake up in the morning, you find out how much money you made while you're asleep. <laughs> so it's one of my favorite things. Um, my phone pings every morning and lets me know what I made yesterday through my book sales or my other bits and pieces, um, my e-courses or my memberships. It is um, an amazing thing after such a long time. You know, I've seen 1,400 clients in a year and seeing that many people and being so, um, uh, you know, multiple zones of burnout and, uh, being on all the time and, and all of that kind of ways of doing it, it has been such a different thing to be able to share my knowledge and know that people have it available to them whenever they choose. Like they can access it however much they want to. Um, you know, and it's, it's those late nights, you know, when you're up at 10, 12 looking for information and you're then able to access whatever information you want. You can download that course. You can buy that ebook, and it's it's a one click kind of wonder. Uh, we do it ourselves, and so do our clients. So why not have it be you in front of your clients rather than somebody else? All right. So I'm up for Q and A for the next six minutes. So let me know what your questions are around your e courses. I'll have a little flick back here. Mickey, I hope you're feeling better, my darling. I know that you're not uh, um, you're unwell, and I'm super excited to see what you're creating. Lisa, would you charge per module or as a whole package? Uh, Lisa, have you ever bought an e course before? Because um, vast majority of the time, it's it's per package, because it depends on what you're actually creating as to what uh, you will want to sell, um, but I would suggest that it's definitely per the whole package. So, um, an e-course. Uh, what's your what was your ideas there? Did you say what? Oh yeah, growing your own food and medicine. Yeah, so I would want to know how do I fill up my whole garden with food as medicine? Awesome. So on your sales page, it's all about. How am I filling up my whole garden with food as medicine? What do I need to buy? Where do I get it from? Blah, 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 blah. And then the in-depth about um, food as medicine. So here's my eight-week program. And of those eight weeks, remember we're doing post-it notes, um, of those eight weeks, how would I split that up into eight sections that are going to be beneficial for the people who are watching it? Now, you can sell that whole program for $1,000. And I've seen lots of gardening um, variety things and food-related things being sold for $1,000. And um, the, the pricing part of it uh, has so much more to do with you and your money mindset than it has to do with anything else. So again, topic for another time. But if you're going to say, for instance, share that with people and go, okay, $1,000, um, to completely re refurb my whole garden and create it just as food as medicine for myself, then if it's $1,000 for that and your target market is a bit like, oh, I can only really spend $150 at a time, then you might think about creating a plan for um, them being able to pay $150 every month for 10 months or something similar. And then you are able to 
um, give them a payment plan. So it's not that they're paying per module, it's that they're paying a payment plan for the sum of the whole program. So uh, hopefully that's beneficial. Um, Helen, how do you work out the length of the modules and the lessons? Great question. So um, length of modules and lessons really depends on one, you, two, the client. Some of us are really details oriented people. We want to hear all of it. I want to watch every, I want to read every single piece of that publication from front to back and I want to then implement it and I want to write notes on it and I want to do all of these things. Um, uh, we have a model for that that we talk about at the retreats and in the, and, and in the club and, and when you're an information density type of person, you actually might want to present that type of uh, information to others. But not everybody is into all of that. Uh, as human beings, from a lesson learning perspective, we can only actually remember <laughs> the best part of seven minutes of um, what we're actually listening to. So uh, the maximum we're going to actually take in is about 23 minutes of, a, of one hour. So how are we creating the amount of information that somebody can create a change and again that's behavioral change stuff how can we create a change that they're going to do something cool with rather than just um, vomiting up a whole bunch of information to them so uh, if it comes from how much content do you give them how long is a piece of string so if you want to uh, dive deep maybe you want to do an hour-long master class for them if you think about how many things you watch in any given day, most of ours are about two and a half minutes. That's where most of our um, little splits are as humans and as um, marketers actually know that really well. But if you want to give more in depth, then that 23 minute mark is about how much you will actually be able to um, retain somebody's attention for. So if you're chunking down your information into 23-minute bite-sized chunks or some, somewhere smaller than 20 minutes and you're really getting to the point, the real, you know, it's like being in an elevator with somebody and say, for instance, we're talking about that first week of blood sugars and we wanted to talk about where the hidden sugars are, right? And I'm standing in an elevator and I'm just about to go from the bottom floor to wherever this person's going to be and they go, oh my goodness, I've got type 2 diabetes and um, I just heard you talk to that lady outside the lift and you said that blood sugars are hidden, every sugars are hidden everywhere and that'll change my blood sugar. What, if, if you'd only tell me five things, what would those five things be? Instantly, you go, Rrr. Okay, so instead of telling them all about everything to do with that you know about type 2 diabetes, blood sugar and sh hidden sugars in food, then you come in and you go, okay, what are the top five things that this person would need to know about before the top of here? And if you can do that, then you've instantly got a blog post. But if you were to take those five things, you would then be able to stretch them out into a 23-minute kind of conversation, right? So chunking that down is going to be more beneficial for them in the long run. And then finding a piece of actionable content, so a PDF, an audio tape, uh, some type of challenge to give them is going to keep them going. Uh, so hopefully that's been helpful, Helen. Um, cool. What's the next question there? Um, yeah, I want to do that to my garden too, Chanel. Uh, would you use a payment plan? Yes. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> um, yes, 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 yes. The biggest, um, the, the two biggest objections when you are selling something to somebody is one, I don't have enough time and two, I don't have enough money. And all of those are um, made up stuff in their head if you can already meet those objections. So uh, when... And, and if it's that important to you, you will make the time and you will make the money. If it's for my kid, there is no hesitation whatsoever. I will find a way to make that money and I will find a way to take my kid to that thing that I've been told will be beneficial for them, right? So my son uh, my son just had to get a, a plate in his mouth because his teeth aren't coming down properly. And I had to go and get... Uh, uh, had to go to an orthodontist and when I was there he said how much things were going to cost and I didn't even blink I went okay right 
that's how much it's going to cost. And I came back home with a big deep breath and <laughs> we had a discussion as a family about it, but uh, with my hubby and it was like, well, of course we're going to get it done. And this is the thing, right? You, if it's important to you, you will, you will buy it. So if you are making this e-course important to somebody, this piece of information, you know, a thyroid thing, uh, Louise, like you, you have created and a, a number of um, people I know have created, that can change someone's life actually knowing what their thyroid actually does. Um, it can change someone's life to even have an empowered conversation with their doctor about what their thyroid is actually doing, be empowered by those numbers that they just keep getting every month, be empowered by the food that they're eating rather than just blindly eating it and wondering if it is doing something to their thyroid or not. It's amazingly really helpful. And if you can convey that to somebody, just like this plate was conveyed to me that it's going to be amazingly helpful for my son, the objection of money and time isn't a thing. I, you know, we go every three weeks to get this plate checked and we go and I pay the payments that I need to make for it. There isn't an objection. So when it comes to already coming through that, the payment plan thing skips you over that. Oh, you can't afford $1,000? That's okay. Can you afford $200 a month? Awesome. Here you go. And then it's not a thing. You can see when somebody's really motivated to do something, you can create an option for them so that they can do it, so they can get that information. And a payment plan is a really good one for that. Now, the time thing, Helen points out, you like to do things in your own time. I totally hear you on that. And um, if you have a home study kind of course, you want to be able to give it to them in their own time so that they can listen to it on their phone or they can listen to it wherever they are. So being able to give an option for that rather than having to get them to go to a workshop or having them to get to go to a particular event at a particular time, they might be able to consume it for themselves. So having an option for those objections um, is always a good one because you're instantly going to do it if you really want to do it. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. Who else have we got? More questions. If you have a payment plan, do they only get the info as they pay? They can or they might not. So um, with a payment plan, often you have a and that contract says that the entirety of the um, course costs X amount and uh, you commit to paying the Y amounts until they equal the X amount. And so you're, you're still getting the same amount of money, it's just over a actual payment plan. So um, it's a very different kind of notion to paying per week or paying per month or whatever it happens to be if you are on a membership. So a membership, if you are paying per month and then you stop paying, then you stop getting the content. Same thing happens with the payment plan often enough um, and, is what, and is what is written into things like Teachable or Kajabi is if they are on a payment plan and those payments aren't made, then um, they'll stop giving the information. So hopefully that's useful as well. Uh, Jessica, do you run a pilot group through your course for free <laughs> so that they can provide feedback or charge a lower price? Yeah. So... Um, great question, Jessica. And I have, I absolutely did that at the beginning and it was absolutely a mistake. Um, my opinion is that it's a mistake, uh, to, to run anything for free. Uh, that pilot program or that beta test is still your content. It is still $30,000 worth of information that you got from college that you are distilling in a way that they understand it through your, your means. And it's still costing you money to actually, um, create that program and be present in that program. So if it's costing you money there, you need to be paid for it. Now, there's varying ideas about this, but if you are running a pilot or a beta program, you could run it at cost, which means you're not making a profit from it and you know you're not making a profit from it um, and you just get the information or you get the, the information out, you get the feedback from it, that kind of thing. That's great. But it's still taking you time. It's still taking you creative juices to actually get it done. Um, so I would suggest it's still going to be at a, a value proposition. A value proposition is where you are creating a certain amount of value and you're asking for the amount of value back in money. Um, so when it comes to if you're creating $500 worth of a course, 
for a particular person, $500 worth or, two, you know, three visits to you worth of change in their life, then you, you need to be recuperating that amount of cost because you could be doing other things with the amount of time that you have there that are, is going to actually make that amount of money. So, um, yes, my suggestion is uh, a pilot program or a beta testing program, you definitely charge. And uh, I know a lot of people who actually charge the amount that they expect that they will charge, but the next round they end up putting it up. So, um, yeah. Uh, Helen, makes perfect sense. Awesome. Um, okay. Is there any other questions about creating your e-courses? So um, I know it's a thing that we consistently think about and I want to be able to answer any of those niggling uh, ideas there because I think that we are in such an amazing information rich profession knowledge rich profession our knowledge base is huge and if people are like 80% of people who are on Google searching for things search for uh, who are over 18 search for health related conditions 80% that's huge and if you're there with all of your very specific knowledge about your very specific stuff, you have an opportunity to change that person's life. Irrelevant of the money situation, you're able to be, be in on purpose. You are on your purpose by being there, sharing your knowledge through them. Um, and so I think that eCourse has created a really great opportunity for us to share in a way that we are remunerated for that and we actually value what we have to say rather than, oh, no, no, it's just this thing. Because like I said, $30,000 worth of your course went into you to distill this information in a way that you understand it. And if you're just seeing one person at a time distilling little spits and spurts of that information, it's not going to make the same amount of impact as an entire e-course being able to share that for a particular subset of the population. So... Uh, Jessica, when you speak about how much a course costs, is that based on how many hours you spent on it plus other costs? Yeah. So um, a course actually costs you money. So um, one, it will cost you the time it takes to create it. Uh, if you are currently um, putting yourself out at $100 an hour um, as a practitioner, in the hour that you are creating that course, because you have to be there typing away. You have to be there um, doing your video. You have to be there doing your audio. You have to be there um, creating the PDF. You have to be there sending it those emails off to a virtual assistant or a graphic designer or somebody, a professional. And in those hours, you could be making $100 from seeing a one-on-one -on -one client. All right. But remember, you only have to do this whole system once and then you actually get the money replicatable rather than seeing one client one at a time. But essentially, that's $100 worth of your time creating the course. Then it costs you money to get onto these platforms. It costs you money by um, having to research Teachable, Thinkrific, Kajabi, Access Ally, um, uh, zippy courses, how to put it on your Squarespace. Uh, and I haven't even, I have no idea about Wix if you can do it on there. But essentially, it, it costs you money to do those things. So sometimes you have to um, change uh, back end things on your website. That's going to cost you money. Uh, sometimes you have to sign up to something. So Kajabi costs $50 a month or something. Um, Sometimes it's going to cost you money in create, um, paying somebody else to do that because you can't handle the tech information that it takes to actually do that. So then you hand it off to somebody like uh, we have in the hub. We've got some peeps that help with tech stuff, tech for prax. So that costs money. Then if you've got a PDF that you want to make pretty, then you've got to send it to a graphic designer or somebody similar. And that costs money. So all of the things to do with creating a course, the first time you create it, costs money. So you do have to get that money back. But after that, it's pure profit. Once it's already set up on there, all that money that you spent that one time is gone and you just invite more people in. And as you're inviting more people in, all of the other stuff is on there. So it, it, it's actually all profit. So uh, hopefully that's beneficial. Jess. 
Uh, Lisa, how long would each module go for? <laughs> um, okay. It's a, it's a bit like, um, it's a bit like saying, how long is every one of your um, family, how long does your family celebration, how long does a family celebration go for? Because <laughs> um, it, it's, it's all relative, right? Um, some family celebrations are as quick as humanly possible and you're out the door. Um, other family celebrations, you're just in it and you're like three hours and you just love it and it turns into this amazing thing and it's awesome, right? When you are sharing a conversation, um, a module can go for as long as you choose it to. Um, and it really depends on you and your strengths as to what you're teaching and how it works. Um, and it really depends on what each, um, each of your clients actually needs. And it depends on the subject matter as well. There's no way I could talk about skin. Skin is not my thing, by the way. Adrenal fatigue, on the other hand, I could talk about that until the cows come home, particularly in business people. But skin, my skin module, if I was going to create a skin e-course, it would be a webinar and it would be about half an hour. Like it really depends um, because one, that's the content that I have. Two, it's the type of thing that I, I, you know, want to talk to only a few people about. And three, it doesn't float my boat. Whereas, uh, you know, burnout in business owners, I created an entire 12-week program. Uh, for that and I created little chunks of information for emails and then I created um, little lessons so some modules module might might be like a week I might be able to create five 20 minute pro 20 minute chats on all the things to do with that, those adrenals that week and then I might create five two minute chats so like it really depends on what you're discussing uh, who you're discussing it with, and what your strengths are. Um, hopefully that was helpful, <laughs> Lisa. I know it's, it's, it, it's, it's not as tangible. Like I'd love to say five, ten-minute videos. It really, it really does depend for the same reason that some of us particularly like um, particular lecturers or teachers that we've had in the past because they resonate with our way of actually consuming information. Uh, it's the same for when you're creating information. To share um, all right um, and Lisa if you want to you know I, I create I've created lots of e-courses and I've got a big membership program um, for the club and what I do is create um, think some modules go for two minutes there's some lessons that are in the modules go for two minutes some of them go for 20 minutes and then sometimes I'm like I'm gonna dive deep in this, this is juicy yummy masterclass and a masterclass is something that usually goes for half an hour to two hours, to be honest. And if somebody wants to do that and somebody wants to come in and listen to that, then they can do it in their own time. But it's something if you want to create like a big juicy teaching part, then, yeah, you can do um, half an hour to two hours. And I've also sat in on some uh, live e-courses, which are amazing. Uh, for people like Brenda Burchard used to do them and they would go for like a whole day you would sit in there for a whole day watching your computer and listening to all of this different content so it and that's in alignment with him but it's I couldn't possibly do that for myself so um, it really just depends uh, for you Lisa and for your clients remember we might want to vomit a whole bunch of information onto our clients but our clients might literally consume that like vomit um, whereas they might want little bits and pieces and then go and take some action and then come back and listen to you. So, again, it's a little dance between and don't let that stop you from creating something and getting feedback and then changing it. So don't let that be an excuse for you. Oh, I don't know how long it should be. Just create something that is X amount of long and then share it and then see what feedback you get. Cool. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, Helen, did you talk to the best platforms to use in the beginning of this life? Yes, I did. Uh, Alison, I might have already missed this part, but uh, so you think content is best delivered as videos, PowerPoint or text? Yes, you missed that part. I think content is best delivered however it is in alignment with you. My dad is amazing. I just spent a couple of days in, 
in Canberra visiting them and my dad's a really tech orientated person. He loves detail and he'll give me a book to it. And and now my my son, his grandson, he'll give them a, he'll give us a book to answer a question. You know, uh, literally we've got to open the books and get the question out. And uh, he also used to work on radio. So he has an amazing voice, amazing voice for radio. And he has a way of describing things that are in an auditory kind of way. Whereas I love seeing people. I love interacting. I love, um, I, I just, that's how I work. So um, I think content is delivered best that suits you. And so when I've tried to create podcasts before, um, and Jules Galloway, beautiful podcaster, extraordinaire, um, she has a conversational style and uh, interviewing style that's perfect for having conversations like this. And uh, if that's the way that you can express yourself the best in, in, in a way that is, is really good for you, then do that. If you're a facilitator like me, I love, oh my goodness, if you haven't seen me at, um, on fire at a retreat, I am, wow. Uh, my ability to express myself becomes even bigger because I'm in front and feeling people's energy and being in the space and facilitating and doing different things behind me. Generally, I'm writing on boards and sticking post-it notes everywhere and building towers out of cups. So uh, my particular style that I think is best delivered is me being that because I mean, I'm 100% me. So Alison, depending on what you where you're at and if you haven't tried everything go and try it like if <laughs> my first time on video i was crap oh my goodness i was so bad it took ages i had to create five two and a half minute videos and it took from 8 a.m in the morning to 8 p.m at night it was epically bad so don't use that as an excuse lean in and see what see what works for you but um it's however works for you best because when you are at your most expressive, then others will be hearing you. They'll be actually receiving the information. Whereas if you're sitting on a video and you're hiding and you're umming and ahhing and you're not quite sure and it doesn't quite work and you're not being you, then they're not receiving the information. Uh, another way I love to work is through PowerPoint presentations because I love visual. I, I'm a real visual. I, I remember things. I've got a, a semi-photographic memory. So I love learning things through that mechanism. So I create visual presentations that seem a little bit easier for me to follow through and keep the conversation and story going and teach that way. So it really depends on you. And then secondary to that, it depends on your particular target market because, um, you know, Say, for instance, we've got hearing impaired people. You're clearly not going to do an auditory thing for a hearing impaired person. You're going to get somebody there who is able to get the message across that way. And the same thing works for us in all the other mechanisms as well. So, uh, yeah. Lastly on that is if your particular target market already listens to things in podcasts, already listens to radio, often talks about audible, um, you know, those types of things, then you're obviously going to do it on audio. <laughs> if they talk about the article that they read or the book that they read or the thing, then you want to get a transcription done of it because they're going to be flicking through reading reading your work. Um, or if they talk about, oh, I was looking on YouTube the other day or did you see so-and-so's video, then you're going to create it in that kind of mechanism. So it really depends, but beautiful exploration. All right. Uh, Alison. Do you think if you have more content to release after people have joined, you should give this for free for people who have already bought it or release as a viable add-on? Great question. Uh, you can do either. This is the cool thing. You are in charge of your business and um, I've done both. So um, I'm also a giver. Like you'll see uh, this was supposed to go for 30 minutes. I'm now at 49 minutes. So hmm, <laughs> probably not the best person to ask. Uh, generally, I create things that I find that are really beneficial and particularly if people are in an e-course already, I love giving bonuses. I love giving them the content that they're already asking for. I love giving them that. And then if I'm giving them the bonus in the e-course, then sometimes I'll use them as a bonus uh, to sell 
the next round of the e-course or the next lot of the e-course, if they buy it by X amount of time, I'll give them that as a bonus anyway uh, at the beginning, like as a sales um, conversation. So um, it could be the buyable add-on or a bonus or it could be a standalone. It really depends on how you want to get your strategy going for your funnel. But um, really great question, Alison. Uh, Kathleen, do you have someone write up contracts for the clients to sign or do you write your own for the payment plans? Um, I'd have no idea how to word these. So uh, I use Michelle Whitehead. Uh, Kathleen? Yep. So um, uh, I've talked about Michelle before. Um, there, I can put another link in the, the thing below. But, uh, yes, yeah, she has a membership um a membership one for payment plans and uh she the, the brilliant thing about um getting her templates is that she also has a one-on-one -on -one with you if you ha um, to make sure that you're accountable and following through with it and you can ask her any questions about where you're not sure about what you want to write in there and that comes with the actual template itself that that conversation with her so that's what i use great question kathleen okay i think i've answered everybody's questions all right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So actionable step. And it's not just for the kinesthetic learners. It's literally to take action to get traction in your business. <laughs> so uh, actionable step. Are you already thinking about an e-course? If you are thinking about an e-course, what is it going to take to get you to pick your one thing and then get all of your content and start writing it out, out of your head into an easy flow so that then you can explore a platform. So if you already have e-course content, and my, most of you do on, hidden on your computer, go and explore Thinkrific, um, Teachable, Kajabi, or any of those uh, uh, third-party ones because um, they're much easier, Udemy as well. Um, and if you already have a Squarespace or a WordPress website, see, see what it looks like if you could have that on there. Uh, third to that, if you're already halfway through creating your e-course, what's it going to take for you to actually complete that? How can you um, carve out time in your schedule so that you can complete that? Because once it's finished, you don't have to do it again. Whereas we have to consistently go and see more and more clients. But once your e-course is finished, that's it. You then just have to tell more and more people about it. And if you do have an e-course, uh, my invitation to you is to pop the uh, e-course sales page down below so that we can see you can share it and we might be able to share it with people who might need that amazing information from you uh, so that you can share it out into the world. So wherever you happen to be with your e-course or making money while you're asleep, uh, what could be the next action for you that you could take this week to get more traction in your business? All right, if this has been beneficial to you, uh, think about somebody else who this might have been beneficial to and uh, please share it. Don't keep it to yourself. And I will catch you next week for Training Thursday. All right, see you later.